damn it. <clears throat> All right, hang in there, you guys. I'm sorry. Greetings. If anybody's here yet, the connection is still being extra. So I'm sorry. I know it's like, I don't know what's going on with the connectivities lately. Um, and I do switch back and forth. I clear cache. I switch from data to, um, sorry, from data to Wi-Fi back and forth. So I'm really not sure. <clears throat> it could be weather because we did have a major storm major big time where i'm located on the globe so whatever's going on with this storm that could be affecting some things as well but anyway just come on in greetings welcome thank you for joining i apologize in advance because this may be a very sucky um video quality and sound so i am aware that it's you know it's lagging or it may be breaking up and so i'm doing the best i can and and uh, sorry for that. Now, this one will actually just be brief, but I wanted to share this little clip, which I actually saw here on TikTok. This is not TikTok that you're looking at on the screen right there, but I saw it and it kind of really got me into thinking and it touched my heart. And so this is something that I'm sharing in the name of, in the name of love, actually, in the name of um my own unique way of trying to help folks out there that may not have the full understanding and knowledge about a lot of this type of stuff, but ends up getting caught in some type of stuff and it hurts them. So this is my own way of trying to say, listen, you don't have to agree with everything. You don't have to have everything all figured out, but it just serves every last one of us to become a mindful person about what we're doing because it can not only have catastrophic effects to us, of course, okay, cause and effect, catastrophic effect to us, but it could end up hurting other lives unnecessarily. And so it's like it serves whether you have a personal issue, vendetta, insecurities, jealousy, whatever the situations are, because there's so much that drives people to start to commence and doing things that they ought not, not realizing how this could end up affecting. Okay, so collective, this could be for you or this could be for somebody you're thinking about. Okay, it just depends on who you are and take this with balance. Okay, take this symbolically, metaphorically, however you're feeling guided, okay? But this is an old school movie. This is actually a movie uh, I used to watch way back. As, as you can see, it says 1996. So we go into the way back machine, okay? But it's to do with this esoteric stuff. The stuff that people either don't believe in or they believe in it and they believe that you know, it's just all bad or they believe it's all good or they believe but they don't really understand anything. And I've been saying this and I know it's getting like tiring to hear like a broken record. Anything in this physicality, this experience we're having has the capacity to be either or. So no matter who we think we are, or what we believe, whether this is traditional stuff or more spiritual esoteric. There is light, dark, duality, polarity in everything because it's about the nature of the being and the soul. If someone is off and not well or and they bend any type of a belief system or spirituality or whatever, based on that, this is where it's going into that egoic energy. Okay, divine energy operates on the other end of the stick which means there's honor, there's respect, there's boundaries, okay? But there's consequences in everything. So this is a movie about a witch, okay? It was a young witch that didn't know she was one. Didn't, she didn't even know that she had um, lineages connected to it, but they were of light, okay? She was of light, they were of light. Now her friends, her and her friends started practicing things and playing with stuff, okay? When she discovered that, okay, like she went cool with it. She, she realized that, nah, nah, this is not the way you're not supposed to do that. 
Okay, her friends got upset with her because she no longer wanted to be a part of the group. Her friends were off, okay? They were not well. They were not natural born um, witches of light, if you will, okay? Now, I, I invite you all to let go of these stereotypical labels that we have attached to things, okay? Because I've been talking about for a long time, spell work is more than what people think spell work is. It can be on the official plane, but our mouth, our words, that is spelling. When you guys were younger and you were in a spelling bee, spelling words, it's spelling, okay? So anything that we're speaking, saying, writing with intention, whatever that frequency is, it is a form. So we really need to get over this mystification, thinking that, oh my God, some of us are dealing with dark witches and warlocks that are not even official in a sense of the way you would equate it in this 3D reality. But I'm sharing this for the more heavier weight stuff because some of y'all done dealt with some heavyweight shit where it was some serious, legit shit with some serious, weird shit. Okay? And this is in the name because there was always somebody of light. There's always going to be someone of light that attempts. They, they try. They attempt to do the right thing and they attempt to neutralize. But it's up to each individual to decide how they're going to respond to that? Are they going to alchemize? Or are they going to continue to possibly destroy their own lives and the lives of those that are near and dear to them as a result of resistance? Okay. All right. So it's very short. And this is what my intention is in the name of love. <laughs> From the ancestor's position, it's a warning. Okay. Okay. But here we go. I'm sorry if it's lagging. Sorry. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Good. Then again, I can sleep at night. So, how are you? We want to apologize. We feel really bad about trying to kill me. Yeah. Honestly, we never thought it would go that far. Hi, girls. How you doing? Hi, Hi Mr. Mr. Bailey. Bailey. Um, and you know that thing on TV about the plane crash was just the glamour. I mean, it was a practical joke. Funny. Sarah, wait. Um, we were just wondering, do you, do you still have any powers? Because we don't. So if you ever want to just hang out and chant or, or call the coroners. Maybe. Hold your breath until I call. She probably doesn't have any powers anyway. Okay, you guys, so I don't know if you guys actually saw that whole movie. You might find it entertaining, but there's a lot of truths to what took place um, in that movie. 
But as you guys can see, the young lady that they went to, the two girls was like, oh, you know, we come to apologize. For, she was like, for trying to kill me. You see the look she had on her face? She was like, yeah, for trying to kill me. And she said, oh, okay, yeah. And then they were like, well, do you want to hang out? Like, they just, they just came like this was regular. Do you see that? Like, it was, like, they took the girl through hell. You have to watch the movie. They took her through hell. They tortured her, okay? Because first and foremost, she didn't, you know, there was something different about her and unique because it was innate. It was her bloodline, okay? And she wanted to operate in light, okay? She didn't want to be a part of it. So they, you know what I'm saying? So they tortured her, okay? They tormented her. They played all kinds of mind games and tricks to make her go insane or to make her think something had happened to her family. And they just did all sorts of stuff to, to really fuck with her. And then they wanted to come at the end because it went really bad. It, in the end, the shit really, it went real bad. Their spells, all that stuff started ricocheting on them. So they go to her okay cash like a trip off of that it's like they were just all cash like -doo 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 -doo. you know like yeah though i took you through hell and i did all this i tried to kill you we're here to see if you would like to hang out <laughs> she you know <laughs> and she's she was casual you see how she was very neutral and this is what i like she wasn't she was very grounded and as a matter of fact though she said oh sure she said, okay, well, how about you hold your breath and then I will get back with you and let you know. And then just boom, bitch, uh, exit, you know what I'm saying, stage left, right? And she left, right? Like it was calm though. She wasn't raising her voice. She didn't threaten. She didn't do anything. She just basically was releasing like, okay, I could probably retaliate. I could do this and that, but that's, I operate in light. I don't bend the universe or spiritual laws just to get my jollies off. I don't bend using, based on my emotion, I'm upset and I'm hurt. So let me, you know what I'm saying, woo woo Like she just stayed in neutral and said, okay, well, no. Basically cutting off the connection, saying go on with yourself in her own way, basically. Like, no, how about you go hold your breath? So she basically was telling them to go fuck themselves because she had no interest in being their friend because like, how are they her friend if they were willing to do that? And it proved it. The moment she stood her ground and walked away, they were bothered that she just didn't so easily accept their apology. They were bothered that she just didn't go, yay, yeah, let's hang out again. Oh, you know, she probably don't, you know, it, it revealed itself. They're like, she probably don't have her po no power anyway. And so they were not even sincere. They were just eating humble pie. They knew they got fucked up. They knew, they knew, okay? And when she, because she heard them, she sensed them, even though they whispered it or whatever. To me, that was what I call divine, divine anger, like it didn't hurt them, but it was like, look, that's why she said, be careful. She gave them the warning because it's like, look, this was the, like the final stance. Like you didn't learn nothing from what just happened with what we just went through. If you haven't learned nothing, you need to be careful because you can end up like this one did. Learn the lesson. To me, it was about like, look, we don't have to be friends. We don't have to hang out. I don't need to get vengeance. But I'm telling you that for you, you need to be careful. You don't want to end up like that. Check your own energy in yourself and go on in life. But that sassy, catty attitude, that, you know, hackling hen, <laughs> that, that type of energy that got them in the shit they were in to begin with is what created the problems that they had, is why it happened. And is why, you know, that other girl that you guys saw at the end, like it went to the super left. She could have been like the, the queen bee of fuckery in the situation. Okay. So she super went to the way she, you know, cause she wouldn't quit. So it just really took her there. And collective, 
you may all y'all may feel the same way. So this is pertaining to you know those that were a part of Fargo with you. Okay, but it's also my way of like no one is gonna be able to say there's not gonna be a soul that's gonna be able to say as this year wrapped up that first and foremost that they didn't have plenty of time, ample warnings and, and opportunities to uh, get off of the toxic wagon, okay? There's not going to be not one person. I don't care how hurt people are, how anger. I get all of that. Um, but it's still up to us to use these things and to uh, heal, okay? So it's not about, you know, denying the fact that people are dealing with trauma, pain, hurt, loss, unfortunate events. But we have to... Um, look at, just like in this case, in this movie, and yes, I know it's a movie, but sometimes people don't stop. Sometimes people were um, tapped on the shoulder, if you will. Sometimes, and this is stuff that maybe some of the outside people don't always get or see because they're not that intimately involved. But it's also a call to let people know, do not play with things. And I, I told you guys, I mentioned this. One of the reasons why I sailed away from what I call modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. One of the reasons why I walked away from modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, which is to me, this is just for me. This is Las Vegas, Nevada. It's because of the energy. It's because of what I was able to pick up on and see over time. And I was out there for several years. I wasn't just out there on a little mini vacay, boom, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Going to a fight, boom, going to a concert, bitch, boom, bitch. Like, no, it wasn't like that. I saw all of it. And I wasn't just, you know what I'm saying, in the so-called bad neighborhoods. I was privy to several neighborhoods from Summerlin to Henderson to downtown. Okay. Now, the point that I'm making is that uh, Vegas is built on some toxic energy and it's prevalent. Now, this shit is all over the world, no doubt. So I'm not implying, you know, that the toxicity that I ran into is just isolated there. But I feel like what happens is a lot of people do run to Vegas. And let me tell you something. If you run to Vegas and you don't become a person that's awakening and healing, one of two things happen to you in a town like that. Okay? It's only one of two. And that's because of the ruling energies. Okay? Either you're going to heal. <laughs> Either you're going to wake up, isolate and heal, or you're going to become what I call one of the walking dead. And you'll end up Selling out your own soul and tapping into some things just in the name of having the glitz, the glam. Because that's all Vegas is about. It's, you know, it's like Hollywood, you know what I'm saying? It's like the Hollywood energy, right? Of Nevada. You know what I'm saying? Like the Hollywood part two, Hollywood wannabe, right? So... If you're not careful, people get caught up in that. And because you have spiritual list on every corner, okay, just like certain towns, you have churches on every corner. But, it, you know, you have spiritualists on every corner. This is why people end up getting a bad taste in their mouth about certain spirituality, just like the same reason why people get a bad taste in their mouth about religion. But... You have these spiritualists that will do anything for a buck. You have people that understand the laws of the universe and understand the world of energy and energy work. And instead of holding high honor and integrity, they're willing to violate that if you give them a certain amount of money. Okay. And because it has a payoff, this is what get people get high off of. And get trapped into, but no one sees the, the fine red print in terms of longevity and what's going to be some consequences at some point. Especially when it comes into violating lives. 
okay, in the name of whatever, okay? People don't count up that cost. So this is why I am putting this out there, like, I highly recommend, don't play with it. Because this is how this stuff goes. Not only does the spell caster, okay? So the spell caster as well as the benefactors, everyone will be visited. Spell casters are visited and warned and told, like, you don't want this $500 that bad. You won't think about it. But everyone will eventually receive something from that. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but it, it's inevitable, okay? So it's about mindfulness. If it's things that people can't live with, I say this, but people just think I'm crazy, which is, I'm in the I don't care energy, and I've been this way for a while. But I tell people all the time, mindful living. If you're not prepared to have this energy visit your life, you want to sit with yourself and you want to think about it. If you're not prepared to have it some way, shape, form, or fashion creep back into your life and what's important to you, you want to think about it. It serves us to get a hold of our emotions, our hurt, our pain, our anger. See, this is the issue to begin with. This is why the queen be in this situation. She couldn't do it. Her ego was overran. She couldn't handle that. Self-destruct. It serves us in our pain. Okay? Just like the other girl, the innocent girl in the movie. Y'all think she wasn't hurt? See, people forget all about that. Everybody looks... Everybody be looking at some of the major catastrophic events or things that take place to people who were a part of doing toxic, catastrophic shit to innocent lives. But they... They... They focus on the, the, the tragedy or the the ramification but easily it seems like people just easily and conveniently pass over or forget about the catastrophes and the pain and torment that these individuals cause other lives for years as if that didn't matter so all I can say <laughs> is collective y'all high vibers keep healing your ancestors and yourself because it depends on what your soul rank is and what what you're working through but your ancestors and yourself is like the innocent girl in this movie do no harm but we'll warn individuals time and time again like if you insist and persist in this energy you may not be able to come back from it and that's a beautiful heart. It's like, look, do no harm, but you will be stopped. This will be, you will pay for this. And it's not going to be my fault. It's not going to be my fault. I'm giving you the answer, the key that you need. But I can't make you hear the key. <laughs> I can't make you take it, but I can provide it. And that is essentially what the ancestors have been doing over the years, doing now. Some people grab a hold of it and listen and they go on about their life and they stop bullshit. Others don't. And then this is the stuff that the other collective humans around them eventually see and what happens. We shouldn't feel shame. What's unfortunate to me is in certain cultures, you know, people don't want to look at mental health issues properly okay they just look at this external they get it they step on a religion they'll go through some formalities but whatever but not really deal with it because it's like taboo or something like we don't do that it's like look if you're having struggles it is no shame of getting the help you need rather than ending up destroying your life And those that matter to you because you don't want to get well or you don't know you don't want to go and do that healing work for your own soul. Where there's grief, be able to process grief, to be able to process rejection, 
abandonment issues. I mean, because they're I'm fully aware of some of the shit that has caused people to become the individuals they became. But at some point, we still have to take responsibility for that, though. In other words, going to get help, but seeking a life of trying to prove a point that's never going to be proven or trying to uh, silence people who have a right to speak their truth or trying to, you know what I'm saying, get vengeance is only going to hurt you. It's time to deal with why the wounds are there. Grieve the pain. Grieve the loss. Process that. By no means am I trying to minimize, listen to me, hurt, loss. You don't live the life I've lived and not understand grief and loss. And not understand betrayal and injustice. Me and my son has lived many, many years Dealing with this kind of shit. We're here and it's not for the lack of people trying to kill us. So figure that one out. But we have to go somewhere and heal. See why we're jealous. See why we're envious. See why we're so angry and full of hate. See why we're a bully. See why we feel justified in stealing from innocent lives. See, deal with that. See why we normalize being a whore and hurting people on purpose and wanting to keep the shit a secret and then want to smile and teach something on a profile and a platform. We need to look at that. Why we feel okay with it. Why we feel okay with hurting lives and then go sing like an angel tomorrow. Those are soul issues. Those are wounds, traumas, programs. Everybody want to be a curse breaker. But not everybody want to do what it takes to actually be one. Because it's not about getting all this stuff so we can go somewhere and stunt and say, I'm a curse breaker. <laughs> what the hell? Who are you? That soul. Because a lot of these curses is the stuff that we are further perpetuating, whether we want to see this or not. Lies, deception, murder, betrayal. Those are the curses. And we can snap on anything we want on top of it. Hiding behind it is not going to make it go away. Trying to off people who know the truth, it ain't going to make it go away. It's only going to rack up more karma for those who are participating in it. Lying for toxic people. Closing a blind eye to justice and then wondering why you're haunted. See, this, this is not going nowhere. I am sorry, collective, for those of you that are out there that have suffered. I am aware that there is a lot of people in the last couple of months that I've lost folks, okay? I'm also equally sorry for the divorces. There are people who have gone through some major divorces and separations that were extremely painful. There are people where families broke up. There are people, you know, unfortunate uh, fatal accidents and, and deaths and so forth. I am sorry. Y'all wouldn't believe some of the stuff that people like myself go through behind the camera. You, you wouldn't believe it because we teach or we, we do certain things. But they, people don't get to see the other side either, though. I'll tell you this. Today, when I was talking to my guys, working with my pendulum, asking about some things, I'll tell you this. 
And even though I know why, I still cried. I'm just going to tell you all that. Actually, first I got mad. I was mad and I was trying to hold back. I sat there. I was mad because I, I was mad at why something happened or how it got there and, and so forth. And I was mad. So I, kinda, I hit the table. I was sitting down with my fist. I hit the table. I remember that. And I just sat there and I was like trying hard. I was trying really hard. And then eventually I just broke. I broke. That's all I'm going to say. Because it's like when you know that things could have been prevented, it makes you mad first. It makes you first mad. You're mad first when things could have been prevented. And you're like, Ugh. like, why did that happen? Why? Why when they just go heal? Why wouldn't they stop doing this? Or why wouldn't they stop? You know what I'm saying? Messing with those to toxic people. Or why wouldn't they stop trying to get revenge? Because this didn't have to fucking happen. And it's one of those kind of things in life. When innocent lives are divine souls, they know that things don't have to go a certain way. But they also know that free will is at play and there's cause and effect that's going to always be working. This is why I have tried so hard for so long. But I too am fully aware that when people don't respect the vessel and what they have to say then that's going to be in one ear and out the other one anyway. People are going to do what they're going to do. Especially if they look down on you and they think you ain't shit. So, people end up reaping consequences that are just unfortunate sometimes. So please get somewhere and heal. And if you love the people that are around you, if this is not pertaining to you, if we love the way we say we claim it to love folks, don't help them be toxic and don't turn a blind eye to the warnings and all this stuff that is being shown to you. People have real issues. People have narcissism literally malignant they may not be diagnosed but listen to me it doesn't mean it ain't there before you can get to a diagnosis does the person have this narcissism prior to the diagnosis or not the answer is yes most will never have that diagnosis this is why it's important for us to learn how to pay attention to energy Conduct, behavior, educate ourselves, be mindful, be present, paying attention. If you are here, that means you have time left here on Earth School to work out things in your life. What you came here for. And you have an option of going the light way or the dark way. And I'm not talking about religion either. I'm talking about you're given opportunities to work on your own soul and to deal with your issues or not. There's cause and effect at play for every last one of us. I'm aware also that, you know, we have had past life for those of us that are aware about past life situations and karmic situations. See, the thing about that is every lifetime this is happening, everybody, all perspective souls are given some form of an opportunity to remedy something out in a healthier way, but it still be up to the individuals rather than repeating the same cycles of toxic abuse, if that was the situation. 
I saw a reader on YouTube that I admire and she had a similar reading as mine. It's not exactly as mine that I did months and months ago. But she said that some of you all collected had past life karmics that were your servants. Okay, so it must have been in like those dispensations where uh, like if, you know what I'm saying? Like let's say if you were in a dispensation in time and maybe you were royalty or maybe y'all, y'all know how the history has gone. And so some of them had an issue with some of you all. And they died, you know, they died off and they came back with that program, with those wounds, with those imprints. So this is their obsession. This is why they end up not even knowing they're obsessed with you. They're obsessed with following you. They're obsessed with trying to put an end to you. They're driven they, with a hate for you that they don't even fully understand why the hell they hate you. And if we're all given an opportunity, okay, can y'all heal this, this life in a higher vibrational way to finish this? Can you do it? And so what happens is whoever decides to attempt to try and heal and alchemize, you're released. You get to ascend through and end thing, woo -dee woo But people that are hell bent on trying to cause havoc, stuckness, all that lower vibration, They'll end up reaping these, these ramifications because they're still there. This is why we must learn how to read energy. I did it a long time ago. I want to say October. I did a reading on it. I called it the Terminator. And it was the subtopic was they are subconsciously programmed to destroy you. And for many of us, it's our kinfolk. Who were past life karmics. For many of us as lovers. It's people we married. And I know this ain't popular. But y'all will know. Because there's this constant static. There's nothing. They're never satisfied. There's this underlining eerie energy. Constantly. They may be religious. They may carry Bibles. But none of that matters. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And you're not here to sacrifice yourself collective this lifetime to people, to no one for that matter, but to people who they prefer to stay there. They're still in it. They get their highs off of it. And they prefer to just keep up with their obsessions. Trying to block your happiness, trying to block your love life, trying to block your money, trying to steal, trying to clone, trying to this, trying to that. You're not here to do that. You're here to catch it. <laughs> You're here to learn your perspective lesson and get on. We cannot take on the burdens and weights of what karmic energies do as a result of us releasing ourselves, which we have a right. Other people's actions, choices, behaviors, and decisions. People who keep doing dark magic, no matter how many uh, readers, creators, whoever, warn against it. People who keep playing with those kind of people. People who keep workers and people who keep trying to pay folks to do shit like you. We can't do anything about that. But also, we ought not have to feel bad about what happens when people refuse to stop. Because were you there making them get in the car to comfort somebody? Were you there? Making them go and hire spellcaster number four, five, six to do yet one more death ritual. Were you there? While they were, you know, frantically and violently coming against somebody. Were you there? When they were forging documents and stealing shit and hiding shit. Were you there? When people start getting the consequences of their actions and people, it's sad to say, they want to turn around and look at the innocent lives. This must change.
The innocent lives wanted to be left alone in peace and people couldn't do it. The innocent lives wanted their justice. They didn't care nothing about other people, where they go, what they was going to be about. It's like, whatever, whatever. The innocent lives wanted justice. They wanted what was rightfully theirs, and they wanted to be left the fuck alone. It's that simple. The innocent lives wanted to be heard. People have bullied and silenced innocent lives for decades and have gotten comfortable with that. Abuse doesn't stop until someone stands up and speak up. And when I say abuse, I'm talking about all forms. I'm not talking about just the classics, the standards that everyone look at. I'm talking about the insidious nature of narcissistic abuse. I'm talking about abuse of energy, intruding on other people's auras and energies. Financial abuse, using people's personal information, wrecking people's credit so they can't get anything for themselves. I'm talking about sexual abuse. I'm talking about financial abuse. People that use money and power as a tool to control people and entrap people instead of being truly genuine and sincere. I'm talking about spiritual and religious abuse where people use their so-called knowledge to tear down people and want to be heard. I'm talking about the blatant disrespect and intrusion on the disabled community as if their lives don't matter, like there's some fucking pick aparts. These lives deserve to be heard, and they have a right to be heard, and they have a right to speak their truth. They have a right to tell their stories of what people have done. And if people didn't want these stories done, spoken of, they shouldn't have did it. When catastrophe happened, then people are upset at the person who had the balls to speak. But it was due to failure of enough people speaking before it got to those points is why it happened to begin with. Until people stop being cowards and stop hiding and making excuses and looking for the easy way out in life, this type of stuff will continue to go on. I certainly hope that people heal as this year come to an end. I certainly hope people take out this time to grieve, to rest, to do a life review, to change their world before even more destruction and even more destruction that just don't even have to happen. When we are fixated and obsessed and hell-bent on hurting somebody's life out of our anger, our envy, our jealousy, our entitlement or our false sense of supremacy, importance or seniority or whatever it is we got all up in the upstairs region that makes us feel all right with being fucked up. We're putting all that stuff, we're piling it up onto ourselves. And it's not going to be in the ways that we can always necessarily predict and think. This is why they say count up the cost. Be mindful. What matters to you left on the earth? Because when we go after what matters to others, whatever we have left that matters, you can bet your bottom dollar something's coming for it.
We need to decide to be decent people. And we need to, to decide to work on being decent people. That is an accomplishment. It's not a religion. It's not an outfit. It's not a quote. It's conduct consistently from the heart. We need to decide we want to be decent people to all. Whether we necessarily agree with them or not. Because see, it ain't about us agreeing. Nobody asked us, see. That's all that narcissism. Nobody asked, not one of us. We supposed to be here worrying about our own journey. And being a decent person. And not violating other people. I'm going to close and I'm going to end it here and then I'll stop it. But once again, Sarah? this is a reminder. Hi, Sarah, how are you? Good. Then again, I can sleep at night, so how are you? We want to apologize. We feel really bad about trying to kill me. Yeah. Honestly, we never thought it would go that far. Hi, girls. How you doing? Hi, Hi Mr. Mr. Bailey. Bailey. Um, and you know that thing on TV about the plane crash was just the glamour. I mean, it was a practical joke. Funny. Sarah, wait. Um, we were just wondering, do you, do you still have any powers? Because we don't. So if you ever want to just hang out and chant or, or call the coroners. Maybe. Hold your breath until I call. She probably doesn't have any powers anyway. Thank <laughs> you.